Welcome back to the Single Malt Review. Now, Tim, you remember episode 22? Yes, I do. Those who have been following us for a very long time may remember that as well, where I, um, past me, really, really made it difficult for future me to make an uh, episode tagline for this one, because in that episode we reviewed Ben Romick, 10-year-old cask strength. Mm. And um, this episode we're also reviewing Ben Romick, 10-year-old cask strength but it's a very very different mm. cask strength way back then that was a not a pre-release but it was a one-off that they had brought out and this was before they had their um their sort of stabilized 10 year old mm. ben romick here it is this is ben romick 10 year old here it is just the cask strength version of it there is no difference between this and the standard and excellent i should mm. say 10 year old um this just has significantly less water in it 100 proof, as it says. That's mm. British proof, obviously, being 57%. The British like things a wee bit stronger mm. in their proof. Maybe watered very slightly to get to exactly 57%. Well, it'll be, it'll be normalised down to mm. be 100 proof. Although, yeah. if a 10-year-old whiskey was coming out at more than 57%, I'd be slightly frightened because <laughs> that's very, very strong. Mm. Um, I thought I'd leave this one in the box because um, I don't usually care about packaging that much, but this one really does come in a quite a solid... Um, quite a solid wee box thing here. Um, fairly sturdy. Mm. Don't know about the font on the bottle. They've got a bit of a Comic Sans thing going on there, but, you know, can't be helped. And there's even this thing, which I didn't actually find the first time. It's like the Ben Romick. Goodness, I think there's Silmarillion in here. Never mind. Um, have a look at that later. So, mm. Ben Romick, 10-year-old, no difference. Same casks, same whiskey as the... 46% normal version mm. of it. Similarly, no colouring, no chill filtration. Nothing different except there's a bit more whiskey in it. Mm. And that's kind of how we like things at the single malt that's review. A combination of bourbon speaking. and sherry casks, right? It is. It's their sort of house blend. And mm. there's no small part of sherry in here, as you can tell by the colour. It's mm. a very, very promising colour. So without further ado, we'll have a wee look here. And I'll ramble on a wee bit more about Thank you. Ben Romick itself. So recently, um, recently sort of reacquired by a more independent company, Ben Romick. Obviously, it was not loved enough by its previous owners. Um, the company of which escapes me just momentarily. It might come back. You never know. Um, which means the oldest Ben Romick you will see from the new ownership, the new distillers, is I think still only fifteen although they should have some 18-year-old stock rolling around there by this point. We'll probably see that on the horizon very soon. But um, as it is, any Ben Romick older than 15 is probably from the old make, the old stock that they acquired when they bought the distillery. Um, and so that is significantly rare and significantly different. When the new owners of Ben Romick sort of rebooted things, they went for a very, very compelling, I think at least, style of whiskey. They decided to recreate the old style of Speyside whiskey in which there is a significant portion of dry mainland peat involved in the whiskey. So um, we'll have to see whether uh, you're a fan of that one. I certainly am but it's a uh, it makes a very, very different Speyside mm. whiskey so I'll be interested to see what you Well, what looking you back think. at our scores for the previous 10 year old cast strength in Romick. Mm. I enjoyed that one even more than you. I believe I gave it an 81. Well, we marked that 72. one fairly hard. I gave that one a 72, yeah. and you gave that one an 81. Mm. And I think my my conclusion on that one was that it just wasn't hugely developed yet and needed mm. a bit more complexity and could have been much improved by a bigger blend of casks. Mm. As it was, it was a very, very bourbony whiskey. It was a 100% bourbon matured one, that one. Um, and it tasted, uh, from, from my dim recollection of that episode, like it might have come from a quite a restrained um, batch of casks. Mm. Uh, this one does not. This one comes from a blend of bourbon and sherry, and it is quite, quite diverse in the flavours that mm. it brings, which we will elucidate on. In the time we've been talking, the air around us is quite filled with vapours from this. It's a very heady fug of fumes. Mm. There, there's, it's not, um, it oh, is not well. without fug uh, mm. at all. It's quite noticeably peaty, which is mm. uncommon, very uncommon for a whiskey that doesn't describe itself as, as a peated one. <sighs> but it's a dark, dark mm. nose on it as well. Lashings of strong honey. 
it has um, tasting notes here mm. for us. Yeah. Um, it's uh, stewed fruits, beeswax, polished vanilla, and smoke. And those all fairly well represent the stewed fruits. I think not just yet. I think mm. the stewed fruits will come out once we add a little bit more water. I think these are the, just the same tasting notes from the forty-six percent. So it'd be maybe a wee bit modified there, but certainly, certainly the beeswax very very strongly in the polish. Mm. Um, it's leaving it absolutely comes through very crisp kind of high tide mark inside mm. the glass there's a lot of substance there it's a tremendously dense mm. um, nose on it is how I would describe it there is not an overwhelming amount of prickle but there is some it's not as I mean we recently tasted the Aaron 12 year old cask mm. strength which was a very very similar strength it's not as gentle as that one was it's a more elemental whiskey going on so there's a there's a roughness there's a roughness to it, but it's not an unpleasant mm. roughness. So let's see what it tastes like at full strength. Ooh, that's a generous prickle, mm. but not nearly as much it as the, oh, here it comes. It's yep. a slow burn. Mm. It's it's prickly <sighs> enough, I think. Yeah. This one. This one has it's quite a quite a weird and quite a raw whiskey. The palate mm. there's almost a metallic quality to the taste mm. like a chewing on a tin spoon almost there's a metallic almost rusty kind of a metallic edge on there mm. i've said metallic three times in the same sentence <laughs> i need to be taken out and shot after this episode never mind um but that that is the way i would describe it there's a metal edge uh, yeah a hint of there. it like a bite of of rather rare beef mm. Mm. but in addition to that there's yeah the first at very first there wasn't a noticeable burn but after that it kind of blossomed and uh, ignited it into a big mouth filling vapory alcohol heat mm. tinged with uh, grapefruit and a bit of ginger there is there is zest there it's a very very dry whiskey mm. um, the normal strength is quite dry as well it's dry powerful and mm. quite quite marine while being nowhere near the coast it is quite um, almost an estuarine nearly mm. iodine kick off it from the, I'm getting a more probably from the peat, rather gentle uh, peatiness. Mm. Sort of putting me in mind of say a lightly peaty, um, I don't know, Bunnerhaben maybe, something along those lines. Mm. Now that's uh, I'm curious just how sort of drinkable that is at the full stonking fifty seven percent. Normally, a scotch that strong would be well difficult to count. Mm. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't is, blow you up in any yeah, means. It's punchy and powerful, but not um, you know, distressingly so. Now, I'm less going to add some water so I can actually have some taste buds left after this. Mm. So that makes a huge difference. And for me, it's all positive. Um, mm. I've reduced it to maybe, I don't know, maybe 48, 49%. Not all the way down to the 46 of the standard release. But oh, here there comes... is a huge, mm. huge increase in sweetness now. There's a lot of rich and quite maritime peat. I'm thinking of some of the um, livelier young brook laddies. There's almost an edge of chlorine on that, like a little bit of a, a touch of a swimming pool, which is normally something you'd not want to mm. encounter in anything you're actually drinking, but right. it's just an aspect of that peaty aroma. Which For me, that really comes through as, you know, as iodine, um, which is mm. a flavour I normally associate with Isla whiskies yeah. which this has very very little to do with although that said i'm not sure where their malted barley comes from for all i know it could be um could be ilo peated barley it could come from the port charlotte maltings who knows i didn't do that particular bit of research but mm. there is a distinctly tangy quality to this whiskey i am not getting any of it on the tongue anymore though it's very much there on the nose mm. it's a distinctly peaty aroma now but i as far as i can tell i'm not really tasting it but that, that addition of water has calmed things down dramatically. That mm. rusty metallic taste that I was that I was detecting earlier, that has subsided dramatically mm. and we're really getting the stewed fruit that it promised now. It's the flavour is almost hundred percent the quintessential space side now, except it's possibly a bit maybe a, a bit mild and subdued for me. There aren't any really standout notes. There's a general stewed fruit and fruity waxiness 
Um, but no particular highlights, no mm. fireworks of flavour going it's on. A, the it's a whiskey that tastes of a lot of different things at once. Mm. It doesn't really have a theme. Beyond being out there, I think, is the, the theme. Yeah. Um, being one of the now the very quirkiest space side whiskies you can you can get your hands on is probably mm. what it tastes of to to me. But um, trying to really nail down its style is very, very difficult because style is very, very unique. Mm. Um, in re- recreating a sort of long lost style of space side whiskey they've set themselves quite apart almost every other distillery operating in that region now they've got something that's sort of gentle fruity and peaty all at the same time and it makes for quite a weird quite a weird thing and quite a thing that modern um, whiskey consuming taste buds are really really not used to mm. anymore was it i mean were, were we in the 70s tasting whiskey that had been distilled in the 60s or even older than that this would be far more common of a taste that was Ooh. back when all whiskey was floor malted uh, at the distillery and it was all to a greater or lesser extent peated hmm. simply by means of its um, fabrication you know there was no there was no malt works and if you malted it yourself you needed fire and where there's fire there's smoke so um the indicative of an earlier age i think albeit um albeit uh for for a different reason hmm. this one is difficult to mm, difficult to nail down and subsequently difficult to score hmm. i really like it but trying to articulate exactly why is harder because there's no one thing i can grasp and say this this is why this is so excellent i think there's whiskies that have nosed and tasted better the reason i love this one so much is because it is so very very different because it represents such a different thing um in the in both the process and the mm. end result so my, my score for this one is an 88 mm. what do you think mm. I'm less impressed with what it's become, especially after the addition of water. It had much more promise when it was at its full unadulterated strength. And I think while it's mellowed considerably, it's also lost a lot. I will give this one an 83. That rates it higher than the other 10-year-old. But then again, those are scores as of nearly two years ago, undoubtedly. Our, well, our own method of scoring and our basis for comparison has evolved and broadened since then. Um, so I'll not think too hard on comparing it to its other relative. It's humble before taking on its own merit. It's, it's mm. very good, but it's lacking in some respects that could push it higher. I think in, um, in future years, as their home stock of newly distilled whiskey, well, newly since their new acquisition, um, we'll see more depth and um, richness come out of Ben mm. Romick as they have more top dressing whiskies available to sort of tip in and yeah. spice things up a bit from their older older stock. But for now, yeah, for now this is something, for people that like something completely different, you could call it, mm. um, this is a real interesting look at a very, very different style of whiskey yes. that doesn't exist anymore, really. Um, so anyway, recommendation from me, but under mm. that proviso, you're getting something quite, quite different, but uh, very, very reasonably priced, so not a big mm. investment, even if you're um, not 100% hot on it. But anyway, um, that was episode 101 into the triple digits now. It's going to be that much harder for me to remember which one we're on, but never mind. Um, 102, coming at you very, very soon. Slanger. Slanger.